Let's have a look at the Scratch programming environment. Here, we can see a single window with three panes. The stage at the top left, the sprite list at the bottom left, and the scripts tab on the right, which contains the blocks tab and the scripts area. The right pane also contains two additional tabs, costumes and sounds, which will be discussed later in this section. Now let's take a look at Scratch's project editor interface. The stage is where your sprites move, draw and interact. The stage is 360 steps tall and 480 steps wide. The center of the stage has an X coordinate of 0 and a Y coordinate of 0. You can find the XY coordinates of any point on the stage by moving the mouse cursor to that point on the display area located directly below the stage. The small bar located here is the stage. It has several controls. The presentation mode hides all scripts and programming tools and makes the stage area take up almost your entire monitor, like this. Here, the green flag and stop button helps you to start and end your program. Let's take a look at the sprite list. The sprite list displays the names and thumbnails for all the sprites in your project. New projects begin with a white stage and a single cat costume sprite. Let's have a look. Click on file and select new. See the single cat costume sprite. The face icon button helps to choose a sprite from the library. The brush icon can be used to build your own sprite with the paint editor. Here, you can draw your own costume. Click on the folder icon to upload a sprite file from your system. Finally, you can also use the camera icon to capture a picture using your webcam and upload it. Let's select a sprite and right click it. You can see the pop-up menu. The duplicate option copies the sprite and gives the copy a different name. You can remove a sprite from your project by selecting delete. And also, you can export a sprite to a .sprite2 file on your computer using the Save to Local File option. If you want to import an exported sprite into the project, just click on the folder icon to upload the sprite. The Hide option allows you to change whether a sprite on the stage is visible or not. After hidden, if you want to display the sprite again, select the Show option to make it visible. The sprite list also shows a thumbnail of the stage to the left. The stage has its own set of scripts, images and sounds. The background image you see on the stage is called the backdrop. When you start a new project, the stage defaults to a plain white backdrop. But you can add new backdrop images with any of the four buttons. Now we'll see about the blocks tab. Divided into 10 categories. These are motion, looks, sound, pen, data, events, control, sensing, operations, and other blocks. The blocks are color coded to help you find related blocks easily. Scratch 2 has over a hundred blocks. Though some blocks only appear under certain conditions. The data palette appears only after a variable or a list is created. Now let's move to the Costumes tab. You can change what a sprite looks like by changing its costume, which is just an image. Let's try changing the cat sprites' costume now. Click the thumbnail of the cat sprite and select the costumes tab. The cat has two costumes, costume 1 and costume 2. 
The highlighted costume one represents the sprite's current costume. Right click on a costume's thumbnail. You'll see a pop-up menu with three options. Duplicate, Delete and Save to Local File. The first option adds a new costume with an image identical to that of the costume duplicated. The Delete option deletes the selected costume. The last option allows you to save the costume to your file. You can then import that costume and use it in a different project using the Upload Costume by clicking on the Folder button. Finally, we take a look at the Sounds tab. Sprites can also play sounds, which liven up the project. You can give a sprite different sounds to play depending on the mood or situation. The buttons in the Sounds tab will also organize the different sounds your sprites can play. Scratch even provides a tool which you can use to edit sound files. This lecture provided an overview of Scratch and its programming environment. We also learned about the various elements of the Scratch interface. You have seen the most basic information you need to create some powerful scripts in Scratch. So roll up your sleeves and get ready. In the chapters that follow, we'll dig deeper into how you can use Scratch to develop your programming skills and even make games.